uh, Mr. Bailey, now is your turn to ask Mr. Atkinson a question. 30 seconds to ask and then 60 seconds. Mr. Atkinson, I would assume we both agree that a mayor needs to be in the room where decisions are being made in order to lead properly. While you were on the council, you had to remove yourself from at least one vote in over 60% of the meetings you attended because of your personal business dealings conflicting with the city. I ask you, can a mayor lead effectively if he or she is not even allowed in the room? Uh, sure, he, he can do that. Uh, I have my business. I do uh, business in the city of Riverside. At, at the time, I can, when, when I was on the council and uh, when I become elected mayor, I cannot do work for the city of Riverside. But <coughs> any, any uh, work that is in the city of Riverside, where a company or if there's association or if it's close, and, and if there was a remote possibility there could have been a conflict, I abstained on that. And that didn't affect any of the decisions that I made while I was on council. It didn't, it didn't change. But, but uh, the question is, and let's be fair, how will it affect you as the mayor if you are not in the room? Because you can't be because of a conflict. Yeah, most, most, uh, most, of the, uh, most of the areas that I conflicted myself out were on the consent calendar item, if you go back and, and, and look at that. And those items aren't in the back room being discussed. So I think it would be a very minimal remote chance that I wouldn't be in the room to discuss the city's business. Uh, let me ask both of you, if I may, uh, if you are victorious, will you continue with your current employment situation, i.e., Mr. Bailey, will you continue being a teacher, i.e., Mr. Atkinson, will you continue with your civil engineering career? I've committed to my students to stick through the semester in government and then to make a decision from there whether or not I, I finish the entire school year. Okay. Um, and after this school year, have you made a determination whether you would remain a teacher should you be successful in November? No, the, the mayor's job is full-time, and I would put my full faith and effort into that. Okay, Mr. Atkinson. Yeah, my, my company has been running smoothly without me uh, during this whole campaign process. So we're, we're, in, the, uh, we're, we're in the transition of turning the uh, company over to my son. It's a new uh, point in time in my life, and I'm, I'm ready to, uh, to, to give back to the city. So I'd be working uh, full time. So for you the will city. no longer be affiliated uh, with be, uh, No longer uh, working there, no. Thank you. Let us continue. Um, and we're going to start with Mr. Uh, Bailey. And then we will have Mr. Atkinson rebut if he'd like. How would you work with local school districts and our four colleges and universities to ensure that Riverside's young people are receiving an education that will enable them to become productive members of our community? Well, as an educator and as the, the chair of the, the Education Roundtable in the, in the city through Seizing Our Destiny, which is a quality of life movement that many of you in this room are a part of, I would say we continue with the partnerships that we have going, and, and we've been uh, uh, rewarded for those partnerships, including a $3 million Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, a grant that is ongoing for another year to increase college going rates and increase college completion rates. And we have a cohort of individuals uh, from both Alvord and Riverside right now that has uh, matri matriculated up to RCC. Um, we also have an MOU with UCR to take those students and give a two plus two or, or, or guarantee them two more years after they finish their two years at RCC to contract to get them through in two years if they you know, complete the requirements there uh, to go to UCR or two plus three to go on to the UCR medical school uh, facility and program that they have. So partnerships and leveraging on the relationships that uh, I have created um, through my last five years on the council uh, and making sure that um, our students have every, every ability and, and, and access to uh, higher education if they so choose. We've also created College 311 for families to be able to go online and see what it takes to get into college and step through the process as well as career cruising. So if you don't want to college, there's career cruising a completion counts is created for individuals that are looking for a career. Mr. Atkinson, would you like to respond? Yeah, I think, uh, I think one of the things that we can look at that not only help the students in their education, but also help the economy, and that is going through internship programs to where we can do public uh, partner, private, uh, uh, public private partnerships where we can get the students involved in working uh, not only in the colleges, but working uh, for private companies and, and for the, uh, the city uh, as well. So that's one of my ideas. Uh, the current mayor, Ron Loveridge, has a dedicated staffer to education. Uh, should you be elected, and just a quick answer to Mr. Atkinson and Mr. Bailey, will you maintain such a position? 
start with Mr. Atkins. Yeah, I don't know what the uh, scope of that position is, and that's kind of a uh, unfair, uh, not an unfair question, but an uh, uh, uninformed <laughs> question as to uh, what uh, that person actually does and what the, what the uh, scope of responsibility is. So I'd have to wait till I get in there and evaluate that uh, position and see what, he, what we have. I think education is important. Uh, we're, a, we're a college town. We've got three universities and a city college. And uh, one would have to ask themselves, if you took the three universities and the community college away from the city, what kind of city would this be? So we have to promote the education in the city and, and, uh, and uh, in our colleges and our youth and, and keep them here working and generate jobs for them. Thank you. Mr. Bailey. Well, certainly. I, I mean, I first of all, as intimately involved myself, I think that I would be doing some of that uh, on my own time. But when you look at the, uh, the needs of the mayor's office and the gaps that we have from the city manager's perspective, he doesn't have a staff that's focused on education. And so there might, there is an opportunity, there has been an opportunity for a mayor's staff member to connect with youth. Uh, they don't only do education policy, Lizette Navarrete left to go to UCR, but also do uh, uh, manage the youth council and the college council Riverside. So that's an important piece to the mayor's office. 